Hello, we are going to be doing the 7.5 notes today, so more of our right triangle trigonometry. This is part two, and so our objectives are you will be able to use inverse trig functions to find missing angles of a right triangle, and we'll solve problems involving trig and inverse trig functions. So today we're learning about those inverse trig functions. Um, so if the variable in an equation involving a trig function is the angle position, then use an inverse trig function to isolate the variable. So for inverse functions, if we think about if we had like x plus 5 equals 10, the inverse of plus 5 would be minus 5. So the inverse of positive would be negative. And so that's what we're doing here. And these are inverse functions, so s sine to the power of negative 1, cosine to the power of negative 1, and tangent to the power of negative 1. This negative 1 just shows that it's the inverse, not just the trig function itself. And how we get those is you're going to start with by pressing the second button on your calculator, and then you have your three buttons that say sine, cosine, and tangent, and right above those we'll say all of these that are labeled right here. So, and they're right above those buttons. So once you press second, you click the one that you want and you'll have your inverse trig functions. So helpful hint, use an inverse trig function to find a missing angle in a right triangle. Most calculators require you, you to use the shift or second to access an inverse trig function. So that's what I just talked about there is uh, we press that second button. Some calculators might say shift um, I know the ones at school have the second button up in the top left corner. All right, and this is really important because let's say we had sine of x equals 4 over 5. We couldn't just divide out x to try and get x by itself. We would have to use that inverse trig function to get there. So we can't just divide it out. All right, so let's go ahead and try a couple examples. So. Example A, and we want to round to the nearest whole angle. So we have cosine of B equals 0 0.5. So what I'm going to do is multiply each side by the inverse of cosine. What that does is we now have B equals cosine to the power of negative 1 times 0 0.5. So we plug that into the calculator exactly as we see it, and I'm going to get B equals 60 degrees. All right, and then let's take a look at B. So tangent of X equals 1.33. So I'm going to take tangent and multiply by the inverse of tangent. And I now have X equals tangent of negative 1 times, or tangent negative 1, 1.33. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that into a calculator. So we're going to press the second and then tangent to the power of negative 1 times 1.33. So x equals 53 degrees. All right, I would like you guys to try C and D. Take a second, pause the video, and then when you unpause it, the solution should be there. All right, here is C and D. We use those inverse trig functions to get those angle measures. All right, let's take a look at example two. So it says use your calculator to find X. Note, decide if you should use the trig function or its inverse. So here, I have sine of 60 equals X. So since we know the angle measure, I'm going to plug it in just as I see it. So sine of 60 equals x. Let's plug that into a calculator. And I'm going to get x equals 0.866. All right, and this one doesn't specify how many um, decimal points to go to. I would round to at least one decimal, uh, maybe at least two. I did three in that first one. 
Um, all right, B, we have cosine of x equals 7.5. So if I thought about trying to plug in cosine of x into a calculator, I wouldn't be able to do that because I have a variable there. So in this case, I would have to use the trig or the inverse trig function, so the inverse of cosine. So I now have x equals inverse cosine of 0.75. And I can go ahead and plug that into a calculator exactly as I see it. So second cosine of negative 1 times 0.75, that will give me x equals 41.4. All right, so when deciding to use the inverse or not, if you don't know what your angle is, then that's when you know to use the inverse. All right, so go ahead and try C and D. Pause the video. When you unpause it, the solution should be there. All right, and there is C and D. All right, let's go ahead and move to example three. So example three through six, find X in each picture. So remember, trig function, angle equals our fraction. So let's, so let's take a look. We are dealing with angle X in example three. I'm going to go ahead and label my sides so the hypotenuse always opposite of my 90 degrees and then opposite of my angle will be the opposite side and then of course we are left with that adjacent side there. All right, so I now have, I'm mainly dealing with the hypotenuse and the opposite because those are the sides I know. I know the 7 and I know the 4. So I can say sine of x is equal to 4 over 7. So remember, um, if we think about so, we have the sine of our angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so from here we'll use the inverse trig function of sine. And I now have x equals sine, the inverse of sine, of 4 over 7. So now I can go ahead and plug this into the calculator. So I'm going to end up with x equals 34.8. All right, let's go ahead and try that again with number 4 here. So identify which angle we're working with. We have our opposite side, adjacent, and hypotenuse. All right, so the two sides that I know, I know 10 and 9, and so that's O and A. And that's going to be TOA. So tangent of X is equal to opposite over adjacent. So I can plug in those side values that I know. So 10 over 9. Now we can go ahead and use the inverse of tangent. So I have x equals the inverse of tan of 10 over 9. So now we can plug that into the calculator. So second, inverse tan, and then 10 divided by 9. Then you can close your parentheses. And we should get x equals 48. All right, go ahead and try that with 5 and 6. So there's 3 and 4, so you can reference it. Go ahead and pause the video, try 5 and 6, and when you look back, the solution should be there. All right, there is 5 and 6. All right, let's go ahead and move to example 7. So example 7, a 15-foot ladder is leaning against a building. If the ladder hits the building at a height of 10 feet, find the angle of elevation. So remember the angle of elevation is from the ground, so our angle of elevation would be here. So we're going to go ahead and label that x degrees, and that's what we're trying to find. So let's go ahead and label what we know. We know the opposite, hypotenuse, and then the adjacent. So I'm going to have sine of x is equal to... 10 over 15. And so now I'm able to use the inverse sign and find what x is. So x equals inverse of sine of 10 over 15. So if we plug that into a calculator, 
I'm going to get 41.8 degrees. So that's our angle of elevation with this ladder and the building. All right, go ahead and try the same thing with example eight. This time we have a skateboard ramp is 3.5 feet high and six feet long along the horizontal. To the nearest degree, what is the measure of the angle of elevation for the ramp? So go ahead and pause the video, try this one out. All right, and there's the work in the answer. So we were rounding to the nearest degree, so it was close to 30 degrees. And we use the inverse of tangent. All right, let's go ahead and go to the last page. So for example, 9 through 11, solve for the variables in each triangle. So we have different variables that we're solving for. So we're going to have to set up functions that involve just plain trig functions, and then as well as functions that involve inverse trig functions. So let's take a look at what we have here. And if we go to the bottom of the page real quick, summary of finding parts of right triangles. If you know two sides, two sides, a side and an angle, two angles, um, then you're going to use, depending on what you have, you're going to use different things. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at number nine. So I know two sides. And since I know two sides, I can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve for that third side. So I can do 12 squared plus 4 squared equals y squared. So that will give me 144 plus 16 equals y squared. And then we go ahead and add those together. I get 160 equals y squared take the square root of both sides. 160 is not a perfect square, so we will have to create a factor tree. So let's do 16 and 10, 4 and 4, like we have a pair there, and then 10 is 5 and 2, and I can't simplify those any further. So that means my y is going to equal 4 root 10. All right, now I need to solve for x. So x is an angle, which means I'm going to have to use a trig function. Let's use the two sides we know. I know we just found y, but it does have a radical, and we don't really want to work with a radical, and it's best to use what is given to us. So we're going to use what's given to us, not necessarily everything that we find. So let's see, we have opposite and we have adjacent. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I can say tangent of x is equal to 12 over 4. And now I'm able to use the inverse of tangent to solve for x. So x equals inverse of tangent and then of 12 over 4. All right, so we can go ahead and plug that into our calculator, and I get x equals 71.6. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. So in number 10, I'm given an angle, and technically two angles, right? Because we always know that 90 degree angle. And then I'm also given a 9. So since I know two angles, including that 90 degree angle, I'm able, able to solve for y. So all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. I can go ahead and subtract 90, right, because we have that 90 degree angle, I'm left with 90, and then I can go ahead and subtract 31, and that's going to give me 59. So what this means is y equals 59 degrees. I knew two of the angles, so I'm able to solve for that third one. All right, now I only know one side, but that's okay. We can use that. Let's use the angle 31, and let's label all of our sides. So we have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So we know the adjacent, but I'm I need to find the hypotenuse and the opposite. I know two trig functions that have adjacent and hypotenuse and adjacent and opposite. So if we think about SOHCAHTOA, there's two that involve our adjacent side. So therefore, I can use cosine and tangent. I can't use sine, though, because that's opposite and hypotenuse. I wouldn't be able to solve for anything if I tried to use that. So let's go ahead and set these two up. Let's start with cosine. So if we did cosine of 31 is equal to, we need our adjacent side all over hypotenuse. So remember, we can switch these. 
So I can find the hypotenuse and let's go ahead and label that as z because that is the variable we're working with equals 9 over cosine of 31. Plug that into our calculator and I now have z equals 10.5. All right, now we're going to have to do the same thing with tangent, right? Because tangent, opposite, and adjacent. So I'm going to have tangent of 31 is equal to x over 9. So x is represented with that opposite, so x over 9. And then to get x by itself, I'll go ahead and multiply by 9 to each side. So I now have 9 times the tangent of 31 equals x. So if we go ahead and plug that into our calculator, we're going to end up with 5.4. All right, so, so far what we've used, we've known two sides, and so we were able to use the Pythagorean theorem and then inverse trig function to find the third side and the related angle that we were looking for. And then, let's see, the next one we knew an angle and a side. So our next one here, an angle and a side. This was example 9, example 9, and then this one had example 10. So we use the trig function to find the related side. And then this was also 10 slash 11. Uh, if we know two angles, we can use the sum of 180 degrees to find that third angle. So I guess this one here is also 10 slash 11. So you can look at those examples to take a look at what we have here. So let's go ahead and try example 11. So we know one angle and we know one side. So, and remember technically we do know this two angles because we do have the 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and start with finding that third angle. So I'm going to do 180 minus the 90 degrees, which will give me 90. And then I'll go ahead and subtract 35. So if when I subtract 35, I'm going to get 55. And that's what angle A equals, 55 degrees. <coughs> All right, now that I know that third angle, let's go ahead, we'll use 35 degrees. So remember, we want to start with the information we know. Even though we now know what A is, we, we should start with the angle given to us. So we have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So using that, this time we have an O. So if I think of, we have so, ka, toa. There's only two that involve our opposite side, which is sine and tangent. So I can go ahead and set both of those up in order to find our missing sides. So I have sine of 35 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So now I'm able to find D. So remember, we can switch these up. And I have D equals 3 over sine of 35. So D equals 5.2. So remember we plug that in exactly as we see it. We'll click the 3, we'll click the division bar, and then sign 35. And then close the parentheses, press the equal sign. All right, and let's go ahead and try the tangent. So now I have tangent of 35 is equal to opposite, which is 3, and then my adjacent, which is labeled with B. So now I can go ahead and switch these and solve for b. So I have b equals 3 over tangent of 35. So once again, we plug that into our calculator. 3 divided by tangent of 35. And that's how it should look in your calculator, at least in most calculators. Some calculators might vary just a little. Once we plug that in, I got 4.3. All right, and so 9, 10, 11 are really good problems where we decide the difference between are we using that trig function, are we using an inverse trig function, and then, of course, what we know about angles, they add up to 180 degrees. This top one here, we were able to use the Pythagorean theorem. 
So there's lots of different things that we can do with um, our trig functions and our right triangles. So use this summary of finding parts of a right triangle there. And then down here is our study guide. Um, so 7.5 was the last thing for our chapter 7. So please be sure to rewatch anything that you might need. If you have any further questions, um, please reach out to your teacher and ask them. All right, have a wonderful day.